HMS Illustrious was laid down in Swan Hunter Shipbuilder's Yard at Wall's End on the 7th of October 1976 and launched by Her Royal Highness the Princess Margaret on the 1st of December 1978. She was accepted into service on the 18th of June 1982. HMS Illustrious has four main roles to deploy large anti-submarine warfare helicopters in support of a force at sea, to deploy maritime vertical short takeoff or landing aircraft for air defence, surface attack and reconnaissance, to contribute to force air defence with the Sea Dart missile system and to provide the platform and facilities for command and control of maritime forces. Like any ship of her size and type, Illustrious is capable of a full range of peacetime tasks such as patrol and surveillance, assistance in civilian emergencies and visits overseas and at home. The ship is 206.6 metres long, has a maximum beam of 35 metres and a displacement of about 20,000 tonnes. She's propelled by Olympus gas turbines which give a maximum speed of about 30 knots. Like other ships of this class, she has a ski jump at the forward end of the flight deck. This revolutionary British invention enhances the performance of the Sea Harrier's vertical short takeoff or landing aircraft, which need neither the catapults nor arresting gear, which are used in conventional carriers. Below decks, she has a large hangar served by two aircraft lifts, and the whole ship incorporates the very latest arrangements for operation and survival in the hostile environments of nuclear fallout and chemical warfare. In addition to food and provisions, the extensive storerooms contain a range of over 60,000 different items to support the ship and her aircraft. Other modern features of the ship include sewage and rubbish disposal plants, stabilisers, self-retracting stump masts for use when transferring stores at sea, and automatic steering gear is fitted and the main engines can be controlled directly from the bridge. Such a ship is capable of prolonged operations at sea, so her ship's company of about a thousand contains men from all branches of the Royal Navy. Every man has an important job, no matter his specialisation, for the prime ingredient of success in a fighting ship is teamwork. Skills represented on board include seamanship, computer technology, helicopter and vertical short takeoff or landing aviation, dentistry, air traffic control, to name but a few. The air-conditioned accommodation on board is of the highest standard, and the facilities include three dining halls, two main galleys and comfortable recreation spaces, which are separate from the sleeping areas. Closed-circuit television from the ship's own studio can be seen in all messes, and there is also an extensive library, facilities for quiet study and a chapel for all denominations. The sick bay is equipped to deal with practically any emergency, and the fully equipped dental surgery contains the latest dental equipment. Main propulsion power is provided by four Rolls-Royce Olympus gas turbines from the same family as the aero engines fitted to Concorde and the Vulcan bomber. The engines drive two shafts through the largest reversing gearboxes installed in any ship in the Western world. Designed and built by David Brown Limited, these gearboxes allow any number of engines to be coupled in to drive the ship according to the speed required. Electrical power, sufficient to light a modest-sized town, is provided by eight Paxman Valenta diesel generators, similar to those used in high-speed trains, while a large distilling plant makes fresh water for domestic use. The ship is provided with a wide variety of sensors and communication systems, which provide the information for both the group commander to exercise control of forces over a wide area, and for the ship to deploy and control her weapons and aircraft. These sensors include a complex of modern radars, sonars and electronic warfare equipment. At the heart of the system is a computer complex, a highly sophisticated operations room and a range of semi-automatic communications equipment including satellite terminals. The radars, sonar and other sensors feed their information to the computer system which produces a variety of displays depicting different facets of the battle situation. The command is thus helped to evaluate the relative urgency of the threats to the ship and her consorts and use those weapons accordingly. Sea Dart is a medium-range surface-to-air or surface-to-surface -surface missile system also fitted in Type 42 destroyers. 
the ramjet-powered missiles are fired from a twin-beam launcher, which is automatically loaded, and it can engage supersonic aircraft, missiles or surface targets. The close-in weapon system consists of two 20mm Vulcan phallic guns, one fitted forward and one aft. They're fully automatic and are controlled by their integral radar. The guns are capable of engaging supersonic aircraft and sea-skimming missiles at close range at an extremely high rate of fire. The Sea Harrier is a derivative of the Harrier GR Mark III in RAF service. The aircraft has a, a totally new radar on computerised navigation and weapon delivery systems, as well as an uprated 104 version of the Rolls-Royce Pegasus II spool vector thrust turbojet engine. The Sea King is a powerful anti-submarine helicopter equipped with sonar, sono boy dispensing equipment, radar and magnetic detection equipment to help its crew locate submarines. Targets are attacked by depth charges or homing torpedoes. The aircraft can be converted to the troop carrying role and its record of successful search and rescue missions is quite outstanding. It's powered by two Rolls-Royce Gnome turboshaft engines. The present illustrious is the fifth ship of the Royal Navy to bear that famous name. The first, a third-rate 74-gun frigate launched at Buckler's Hard in 1789. She saw action against the French on two occasions first in 1793 off Toulon, and finally at Genoa in 1795. During that battle, she was instrumental in the capture of two enemy warships, but suffered severe damage in the process. After being taken in tow, a violent storm drove her ashore, where her crew abandoned her and burned the wreck. The second illustrious, also a third rate of 74 guns, was launched at Rotherhithe in 1803. She had a long career winning battle honours at Basque Roads and Java before becoming a training ship in 1854. She was broken up in Portsmouth in 1868. The third illustrious, a battleship with 12-inch and 6-inch guns, was launched in 1896. Already obsolete in 1914, she spent most of the war as an ammunition ship and was scrapped in 1920. The fourth illustrious was one of the most distinguished ships of the 1939-1945 war. The first of a new class of fleet aircraft carrier, she was launched in 1939 in Barrow in Furness and came into commission in 1940. Her first theatre of action was the Mediterranean in defence of the vital Malta convoys. On the 11th of November 1940, 20 swordfish aircraft launched from illustrious attacked Taranto the Italian's most important naval base. Severe damage was inflicted on the enemy and this famous victory tilted the balance of sea power in the Mediterranean in the Allies' favour. Early in 1941, off Malta, she survived a very heavy attack by Stuka dive bombers, but suffered severe damage and many casualties. After a major refit in America, she returned to active service late 1941. During the rest of the war, she played a major role in the operations off Diego Suarez, Salerno and Sumatra. Her final action was in support of the American landings at Okinawa, and after the war she became a trials and training ship before being laid up in 1954. She was later scrapped in 1957.